my name is Amanda Maliba. I'm a journalist, a content producer actually for the Sunday Independent. Um, I love women topics. I love speaking to different women. And when um, a profile came to me about um, about the, the three of you, and then we just thought, hey, why not have a webinar as opposed to just writing an article traditionally and just leaving it um, there, you know, for just a few people to read as opposed to now. So many people can be connected to each one of you. So thank you so much for affording us this opportunity. 30 minutes of your time, we really appreciate it. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Awesome, so it, it is recording now. I think you all can tell that it's recording. Yeah, I see it in the top corner. It's awesome stuff. So like just two in two liner or three liners, can each one of you um, introduce yourselves? We'll start with Mignon and then we'll go to um, Sarah and then we'll go to Nondogoso. Um, hi guys, my name is Mina Dupria and I'm a South African women's cricket player. <laughs> Sarah. Hello, my name, my name is Sarah Kumalo. I am the first black African female to summit Everest as well as ski to the South Pole. I'm also an executive at Momentum Multiply. Sure. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we are on audience. Guys. Yes, on yes. Audience. <laughs> um, hi, my name is uh, Nontogozo Matonsela. I'm the group chief marketing officer at Momentum Metropolitan Holding. Awesome. So each one of you ladies, each one of you ladies, I mean, hold such very important um, and prestigious positions and have done things that have breaking the stereotype, I would say, you know, that women can't do this and women can't do that. Let's start in the same order again. I mean, you can you just tell us about what it means to be a trailblazer in your industry and what kind of uh, barriers have you broken? Do you think you have broken alongside many other women that have followed suit or are in the same business as you are? I think for me personally, to be a trailblazer does not necessarily mean I have to revel in all my achievements, but mm -hmm. it means looking back and enjoying our far comers and well-rounded human being, not just a cricketer, but also a role model for young girls. And it means that finally all the hard work and dedication that I've put into my craft and the talents that God has given me to pay has, has paid off. And now I actually get an opportunity to encourage our future generation to step up and own their own successes. Um, and then when it comes to breaking barriers, I don't think it was always been one of my main focuses. I like to believe that I have shown and continue to show that women in sport, more specifically cricket, can be appreciated for what it is and that women's sport does not have to be compared to men's sport in order to be appreciated. Awesome. Um, Mam Kumal, can you also take us through your thoughts? So I, um, in, in terms of a trailblazer, I, I, I don't know, I've been given that title. I suppose it's because I constantly push boundaries. I mm -hmm. like to just a little bit outside of my comfort zone and seeing how much I can uh, I can do. Um, I think um, you know God has made it possible that I've been able to to do a lot more. I don't believe that it's I'm um, unique. Mm. I'm following the footsteps of women of 1953. They paved the way for us, and and I am just grateful to play a small part in paving the way for those that are coming before me. Mm. It is also an exciting time where, you know, within the corner of where I'm playing, I know that those that will come after me, I will be able to say, I can do it faster. Mm. Not question whether can I do it or can mm. I not? Mm. Like I was questioned to say, you can't do it because you, you, you know, you don't have testosterone or you can't do it because of the color of your skin, whatever it is. It's making sure that those stereotypes are actually um, broken down and they allow us to see the world a lot more differently. Sure, know? sure. So that's exciting. Sure. Before we move to Unan Dogozo, I'm sorry, you made such a very important point about um, you're just following the footsteps of women that have done it before, right? Why do you think it's important for us as women in, our, in this generation to always reflect back on what the women of yesteryear did so that we can also now take the torch and um, continue with it? That's to Sarah, right? Yes, to Sarah. <laughs> oh, I thought yes. you were still talking. No, 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 we're still with you. We're still with you. Sarah. 
Yes, what, what is the question again? The, the, just... No problem. The question is, you just made mention of how um, you're reflecting back to the women of yesteryear, right? Um, that you, we're not the first. We're just picking up on, on, on a journey that has been started by our, our ancestors, so to say. Why is it important for you to always make reference, or even for us, I mean, I'm, I'm, I could be younger than all three of you ladies. Why would it be important for an Amanda to always make reference to the women of yesteryear, um, taking their journey with me and with us as we move along um, into the future as women of South Africa? I think it, it goes back to Ubuntu, you know? Uh, we are who we are because of those around us. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Everest has taught me is nobody gets to the top of the, the world on their own. I think it's always uh, good to be grateful, to be mm -hmm. grateful to be alive, to be grateful about, for the people that have uh, surrounded you, that have made you who you are. Yeah. I do not believe that today we would be having this conversation if they hadn't paved the way. Mm -hmm. would be fighting their fight today. Mm -hmm. They've actually given us almost like a, a head start because yeah. of the, the stance that they've taken. It is almost, I feel that I'm obsessed in making sure that I leave the world a little bit better, yeah. you know, so that my great-grandchildren are not still celebrating women of the 50s. They're mm. celebrating you and I. Mm. I think that that is important and that's why I'm so excited about owning the success and sharing it with others and allowing them to own theirs yeah. and celebrate theirs as well because traditionally we are told you know be humble about it come on celebrate but not too much you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then boys are allowed to celebrate loudly and they even paid more for probably doing half what we do yeah and, and I think that needs to go and that's what you and I need fix today and sure. that's why i'm excited about this uh, campaign awesome hi hi so um just tell me about now we're going to go back to the question of being a trailblazer do you confidently and um outright you know own the title of being a trailblazer in your in your sphere and i mean i'm going to pick on what U U U Sisara just said right now about us um owning it you know owning and being loud and proud of about our successes first and foremost just being a trailblazer in your industry do you own it do you love it are you proud are you loud about it as you should so interesting you ask me <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I am a passionate leader. I'm a passionate marketer. Mm. So I do, you know, take on the microphone, but never to say, look at me, I'm trailblazing. Mm. I pick up the microphone, bring attention to the work, right. to bring attention to the campaign, to bring attention to the solutions we're bringing mm -hmm. as, you know, Momentum and Metropolitan. But the reason why this campaign is an important one in my life is because I am one of the women who struggle with owning success. Oh. And it, in a corporate environment, I remember when the team and I were working on the inside behind the campaign, we said, you know, often as women, we look at guys in the boardroom, number one, they, you know, you know, is a chairperson of the meeting what they're talking about we have this sense of good girls wait their turn good girls stand in queue politely mm. until somebody makes a way for you <laughs> so, so this topic of owning the conversation and owning success and boldly doing so is an important one for women like all of us on this call right now right. and all of south africa mm -hmm. and i struggle with it and I, one of the things that's helped me kind of break the barriers without knowing actually is there's this term in marketing we call intelligent naivety or in strategy which means you know when a child walks in the room they've got no idea about sarah's achievement mm. and they just see auntie sarah and they're playing and people are like, oh, do you know who she is mm. you can't talk to her like that or minion do you know she's a celebrated cricketer mm. and the kids are naive so i think sometimes it helps to be naive to power, to be a naive to position. Mm -hmm. And really in your naivety, then that's where you kind of push forward. You are not afraid to speak to the CEO because you see a human being, you don't yeah. see a CEO. Yeah. You're not afraid to speak voice because you are not seeing people with positions bigger than yours. You are seeing humans at the table having a conversation. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what's helped me. But 
I am far from owning my success. Even today, when I get introduced on stage, I want to tell people to stop reading my bio. <laughs> and just, okay, just, just say now, non togos when comes on stage. Don't say what she's done. It's great. Yeah. I mean, Nanta Gaza, now we speak about the actual campaign, right? She owns her success. And in my question, I had I put down that I feel like such conversations should not be uh, preached to the converted, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot more women still need to understand the, the importance of owning one's success. When, when, when this campaign was, was being thought of from, from, from inception phase to where it is right now, were the little women in 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 Ekaasi, in the townships and the different parts of South Africa, were they also in mind and also um, in us trying to now influence them and in telling them that whatever I mean, success is different for all of us, right? All all four of us, success is very different. But owning each phase and each uh, portion of our success is important. Were the, the the little woman on the ground considered, and how do you plan on rolling this out so that every woman understands what it means to own their success? Yeah. So first, in language for us, there is no little woman. Mm. There is just a woman. Mm -hmm. Regardless of who you are, there is just a woman. Right. So we thought about various situations where owning one's success for a woman, or actually for any individual, mm. owning your success as any individual, regardless of gender. Mm. Let's call them out. Number one, you know, I'm single. And so when I go on dates, I must own my success. Yes. What does owning your success when you go on a date is? Know what kind of relationship you want. Mm. Don't, don't be fooled or for drink. Know what, veg, what lifestyle you want. Mm. What's important for you. And when you have children, what is, because guys, guys, unapologetic about the kind of women they want to date True. the number of times i hear guys like yeah my girlfriend must be this and my wife must be that and if i am to have a child the mother of my children must have these things but then when it comes to women we're like yeah you know i just want to find love and then sarah will be like slap your face not to go so it's beyond <laughs> fine <laughs> So let's so that's that scenario. And any woman can relate to that. Yeah. The other scenario is when you are in, in the in when you are leading, whether you are leading a small business, a big business, or you are in the C-suite in corporates, mm -hmm. when you are standing in front of people you are leading, you've got mm -hmm. to own your sex. Mm -hmm. And that can be any woman. When you are negotiating contracts, Minion has got to uh, Minion has got to up, up, uh, negotiate her fees. Mm -hmm. She's got to up and, and negotiate her contracts. If a brand says, we've seen you in cricket and we love what you stand for, she's got to walk into a meeting room with a number in mind. Yeah. So yeah. it's all of the, we have brokers in our business. And if you, Amanda, have got a million rand and you want to get a broker to help you invest your money, mm. first, you've got to ask, where have you been successful, Mr. Broker or Madam Broker or Miss Broker, mm. in, in, in running big money, in running big funds? So they've got to kind of brag and talk about their accomplishments to you yeah. in order for you to be confident actually that I can trust this broker with my money. Sure. So there are all of these scenarios and we can think of many where owning your achievements and having your story straight sure. is important. Sure. And I've seen also when I interview people, do you know that nine out of 10 times when you interview a guy, for any job, and they talk about money, they are ready with their numbers. It's not an uncomfortable topic at all. The number of women I have personally interviewed, when it gets to, so what are your salary expectations? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, just, you know, and then the answer becomes, I mean, we can talk. I mean, I just would, no, I would love an opportunity to learn and grow. A lot of women, I stuck in. I wanna learn and grow. I'm so grateful for a job. I wanna learn and grow. No, that's so true. No. So I'm just, I'm just painting. I have two examples I can think of where every woman, regardless of city, big business, small business, with child, without child, 
Ask Can I minute. just add to that? You know, we keep talking about uh, women and child abuse, about mm. all the negativity. I think maybe let's celebrate women when they are alive. Not just me owning my success, but allowing Nontokozo to celebrate her success. Because yes. the more, you know, I had three Everest attempts that didn't work out. People were comfortable with me being reminded for the three years, oh, shame it didn't work out. Then I come back celebrate but not too much mm. why not <laughs> it's like, imagine oh, it's, it's already it's already done no it will never be done until i die i'm going to celebrate it exactly and I love it. please <laughs> please <laughs> Awesome. Um, let's take it up to Minyo. I mean, now, what does owning your success in a, in an industry like cricket, right? I mean, I've grown up all my life watching men play cricket, and here's a woman owning her success and having been the first of something, you know, in the, within that sphere. What does it mean for you to own your success? And kind of just take us to the journey of like how you created a name outside of a gender just being a, a, a cricket player, just outside of gender and owning that space as you are. Sure. So for me, I think, as we've discussed, I think success means different things to different people. And for me, it wasn't always just around my achievements as a cricket player. For me, it was important to be a well-rounded individual. Mm -hmm. So I think if I can one day look back at my career and my life, and I've inspired young girls to take up sport, and to live a life that inspires others, I would consider that to be a success. Um, if I have to take you back on a quick journey through through my success story, um, it's, it's, it's quite hard because I started at the young age of four, so and I'm now 31 years old. So to take you through all of it, I had to jot down a few notes to make sure that I don't go all around. So <laughs> first things first is I actually started at the age of four with mini cricket. Um, I played in a, in a mini cricket tournament, and on this day, it was actually where I won my first trophy for being the best batter of the day. Um, and I think that was where my life started for cricket. Um, however, growing up, my parents felt that we needed to be well balanced. So I tried and, and actually succeeded in many different sports. Um, I played hockey and I did athletics. It was softball, indoor cricket, netball, hockey, table tennis. I even tried chess. Um, and then on the other side, I, I don't think I'm that good at the culture side, but I did try. I was in the school's play and I sang in the choir. Mm -hmm. And um, I also made sure that I tried to make, um, to, to look at the academic side and excel at that too. Um, but actually at the age of 13, um, I played in a girls cricket game, Gauteng North played against Gauteng. And I scored an unofficial world record of 258 runs of 96 balls. And I think this was actually where wow. I realized that cricket might become a career option for me one day. Mm -hmm. um, I then continued playing, and in 2007, in my matric year, I finally got my call up to play for South Africa um, against the tour um, against Pakistan. Um, and then during this tour, I made my debut 50 in one of the games. And, and I then actually became a permanent member of my career. Women's cricket was not professional just yet, so I had to decide to go and study. Um, I was fortunate enough to study marketing um, at the University of Pretoria. Um, I was part of the Golden Key member program, and I actually got my BCO marketing honors degree cum laude. Oh. Um, and then in 2011, um, I was awarded the captaincy. I think this was probably one of the biggest highlights of my career. Um, and then in 2013, it was the first time that women's cricket in South Africa became professional and I was the first contracted women's captain. And awesome. um, I am currently still the most capped women's cricketer in South Africa with over 5,000 international runs and 96 caps as captain. Uh, so I've been very fortunate to be invited to play in T20 leagues around the world. I've played in the Women's Big Bash League in Australia and the Kia Super League in, in England. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 2019, I actually became the first women's cricketer around the globe to have a gate named in her honor at an international cricket venue. Wow. Um, so you can actually see the Minion de Priya gate at Supersport Park. Yes, girl! Um, oh, which is quite <laughs> special. Um, and then earlier this year at the, at the T20 World Cup in Australia, I actually became the first cricketer, male or female, to reach the milestone of playing 100 T20 internationals for South wow. Africa. So wow. that was pretty special. I actually kicked the boys' butt. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And then um, the last few things is um, during the recent Solidarity Cup that was played during lockdown, I was actually the first female cricket coach in South Africa to coach a professional men's team. And then um, lastly, I'll cut it short, at, at the recent Cricket South Africa's award ceremony, I won the award called the Streetwise, uh, Streetwise Award. And that was actually contested this year between male and female players for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. And this award was given to an individual that epitomizes what it means to push the boundaries for their team. Um, so that's currently where I'm at. And awesome. I think that it's quite a mouthful. Yes. I mean, now adding on that, I mean, you, your, your entire story for me also tells me um, of a woman that has been given options. You know, and I feel like as women, sometimes we're not given options. You move from cricket to do other things up until you found what you wanted to do. Looking back on your journey, how important is it for now where every industry must give a woman opportunities until we choose what we want? Not to be told what to do. Like women belong in the kitchen, you know, but, but just to be given options until we find what we want. How important is it for us? I think it's extremely important and I think the biggest thing for me, fortunately, I had a very strong support structure. So I was fortunate that I had parents that supported whatever I wanted to do and they actually encouraged me to try different things. So I think maybe as women in general, we need to stand together and encourage mm. other, other women to, to try different things and not be mm. scared to fail. I think, mm. like Sarah mentioned, she tried every three times before she mm. succeeded and that's okay. And I mm. think sometimes we think if you don't succeed the first time, you're probably just not good enough. And I think also, even in the sporting career, if I have to look back at how many closed doors and how many opportunities that failed and how many ducks I scored before I scored sometimes, <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's endless. So the biggest thing is, I think, once we have a stumbling block, we shouldn't see it as a stumbling block. We should see it as a stepping stone and sure. use it to move forward. Yes, girl. <laughs> Sarah, coming back to you. Now, I love, I love the idea of what um, She Owns Her Success is about. Um, I'm one of those women who, you know, would champion it because owning one's success is so important. I'm learning from all three of you ladies. Um, but for you, how important is it to be part of this campaign? And what kind of, um, what story do you want to tell, you know, the next young girl, Amanda over here, you know, about owning your success and about championing there or being part of this, such a campaign? Um, I think it's, it's important to own your success, but I want to add something that you need to own the challenges mm. that you actually face. You own the successes. Um, and, I, and I also would, would say that own it, own it loudly and free other women around you to own it too. Um, I also believe that it's only if we see others owning it and owning it so loudly on the platform, we all would aim higher mm. because it's, it's a good thing to have. If we are constantly told that, be humble about it, or you don't talk about it, then why bother doing it anyway? You know, I think we work so hard and I think it's important to celebrate. This is mm. almost like a part of celebrating the achievement and then going for the next one. I also feel that it's important what um, Togo also mentioned to say, it doesn't matter which women they are because success, as you rightly pointed out, is different for everybody. Yes. If you are better than you were yesterday because of the little work that you put, it, uh, yeah, that you put in, girl, celebrate, mm. you know, own it, because then you aim to do even better tomorrow. Sure. I think it's just important for our girls um, and also, you know, especially African children. If I, I mean, I travel a lot around the world. If you look at our boys and even American kids, it's very easy to say, you see, this is what I've done, you know, mm. even if they're so mediocre, but they just own it. They intimidate a child that's coming from a humble yourself background who mm. is just equally bad. And that needs to go because the world is no longer as separated as it used to be. It's a global village. And our children cannot afford to be second class citizens of this global village. Sure. Awesome. I love that answer. Nandogozo, now being on the other side of, of, of the campaign, I mean, you, you know how it started from inception and you obviously were part of selecting the women. Now, as a woman itself, championing such a, such a, such a, a campaign, you know, do you, do you, do, is, 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 is momentum also aiming at, at 
I mean, collecting different stories of women and how do you aim to now bring it across different women so I can know about it and Sarah can know about it, Munyo can know about it and Umama Wase Wase Protecting can know about it. You know, how do you plan to now roll it out so everybody is part of this campaign? So we've been, this is our second year and already what we did last year pales in comparison to what we've done this year. Sure. <laughs> and, so one thing, a lot of brands and a lot of businesses celebrate Women's Day on the 9th of August. Yes. We celebrate Women's Month. Mm. So the whole month, our calendar is dedicated to this focus. The second part is through our media buying. We've mm. made sure that we have some prints. So we, we featured on Business Day a couple of days ago. We hope that if you are a Business Day reader, you saw what we did on Business Day. Mm. We've done... A lot of activity on our social media platforms, Momentum underscore ZA, Momentum ZA, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. There's been lots of content. We got Lebo Mashile to write a beautiful, inspiring poem that kind of um, embodies what it means to own your success as a woman. It's been distributed and it's for every woman to hear. Mm -hmm. And then what we've also done, we've sponsored Jesus Water Awards. There is next week, uh, Monday. Um, filming today, public announcement on Monday. Again, another platform. We've partnered with various media to push the narrative around what women conversations should happen or what mm. conversations should happen about women owning their success. Sure. So we've kind of got all of these, but we don't want it to end in August. So we are already with the team thinking about how do we keep this conversation continuously growing? Mm. Um, when the team, when the, uh, um, momentum, uh, Protea's women's team was playing their World Cup. We sent them beautiful images and it was all grounded on owning your success. Mm. So it's it's not just, a, a, you know, it's not a little blip in the calendar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I also, yeah. Say, sorry, I want to say one of the things in terms of what owning your success gives one, uh, building on Sarah, it is a huge confidence booster. Yes. It's a huge boost. Yeah. Yeah. It, just do it for yourself, you know, because <laughs> all, as women, we are our biggest critics. Yes. We are. So if you're going to be done with talking to us now, mm -hmm. then you're going to be like, yeah, maybe I should have, I don't know, my, my, my camera should have been clean. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have laughed when Nonto was saying mm. this. Oh, but why didn't I ask Sarah that question? Mm. So already before you even, before you is this you're gonna go home and be like it was okay mm -hmm. i think you must go home and say actually it went well for these mm -hmm. reasons yes. and then still don't be i mean don't say ignore the gaps ignore the inadequacy or ignore the failure like sarah said but i think that if we were to focus on what we've done wrong our, our chance of is eliminated the need. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, picking up on on that point, on the point that you want the the the, com the campaign has to run beyond August, right? And this is a question for all three of you ladies as we wrap up. How do we continue? How do we continue as women in our own rights? You know, making sure that women conversations continue from this point moving forward. It won't end here. It won't end next week, Monday on the 31st. But we continue to champion conversations around women, especially because we know that as women in South Africa, we're fighting so many things. If it's not patriarchy, it's GBV. If it's not that, it's femicide. If it's not that, it's been looked down upon. It's been sexualized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The list is endless, actually. So from Ononta Wazo to Sarah and then Munyar, how then do we then continue? in our different spheres, in our different um, spaces in South Africa, from Pretoria to Soweto to the Midrand to Boxburg, how do we continue conversations beyond now, beyond August, so that we make sure that women are always empowered and they own their success? Yeah. So I'm going to focus on what I need to do as non togozo yes. What I need to do as non togozo Matonsela is stop being too critical on myself. Mm. Mm. I, every day, need to stop seeing myself as inadequate, I need to mute the imposter syndrome um, voice in my head. Mm. I need to be for myself yeah. because there is no amount of external conversation that can lift me out of that space. Yeah. I've got to work on myself. Yeah. 
Yeah. The second part I spoke, I speak about is this thing I call now your mental diet. Mm. Your mental diet. Oh, Sarah and Minion, they don't go to any rigorous training without paying attention to what it's any, any competition, any race, any sporting activity teaches you to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself positive affirming statements. Mm. So we've got to fix our mental diet. So we're following online, watch your social media, you know, Twitter is actually too heavy sometimes for me, but I want to read like posts. I want to be inspired. I want to be motivated. I want, I want to hear from other women who are winning, who are making things happen for mm. China, China, Nigeria, Kenya, they can be anywhere in the world. Yes. And then I think the third part for me is find your tribe of women. I think we need, I know there are tribes we drink champagne with each other. I know there are tribes for just any regular stock fell. There is a tribe you go on holiday <laughs> with the school. <laughs> Everybody's got a tribe for something. Yeah. I think actually tribes that will make us feel good about ourselves. Mm. We're a tribe where positivity and encouragement is the center of the agenda yeah yeah all right and for inna sarah i love that let's add the hiking tribe then (laughs) (laughs) um so one thing that um uh, notokoso you do well that you did mention is you actually change the m in the momentum for the month oh, of yeah. w w. that is like whoa whoa <laughs> whoa corporates to actually stand up and celebrate women in that way i think if we celebrated a lot more a lot of this negativity that's happening is going to reduce in my opinion how i'm going to to celebrate it is something that i do religiously i don't go around and but i'm to do that for our friends we need to do that for um, our colleagues and we need to do that for all women out there and if we boost them in a way they will not allow anybody to put them whether it's other women or too big. If I look at history, I see a lot of amazing women that have been erased from history. Why? Because we're not talking about them. Mm. And this generation, we are not going to be erased from history because we need to talk about each other and not just about ourselves. Sure, sure. All right. And for you, Minya? For me, I want, but I think one of the, the, the biggest mistakes that I've personally made is probably by thinking that when we're fighting for equality for, for, for us in sport, that we need to compete against the male counterparts. And that's mm. not We need to get like, women's cricket to be appreciated for sports in its own right. Because I think that's exactly what it is. Um, I'm, I might never be as skillful as an A.B. de Villiers, but I might just be as just be as skilled as a minion de Freer, as a women's cricket player. I'm, I'm, I'm just as good as anybody in the world. So I think that's a, one of the mistakes we've made in the past is when we try to fight to get gender equality in sport, they still want to compare us to males. And it's not the case. I think um, women's cricket, and, and especially at this, at this current stage globally in Australia, it's been um, exploding exponentially that women are appreciated for their own skill. And that, that would be something that I hope that we can get right here in South Africa too. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, I had a bit of glitchy issues, but uh, I, we got everything. It's all recorded. Thank you so much for affording me the time to just speak to three amazing women, as young as I am. Speaking to the lovely ladies. <laughs> Appreciate it so much. Uh, and have a great afternoon further. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye. bye.